and the larger part of the customs of the Egyptians are, they hold, European. The colonists still preserving their ancient manners. Oh, excuse me, I think I read that wrong. Let me read it again. And the larger part of the customs of the Egyptians are, they hold, Ethiopian. The colonists still preserving their ancient manners. Okay, I read it wrong. My well, I'm going to uh, go over this in much more detail, but I want to give you a uh, brief synopsis of what this video is going to be about. Uh, according to the um, infamous historian Diodorus Siculus, the Ethiopians, according to Diodorus Siculus, who um, he was a Sicilian Greek historian who lived from 90 to 21 BC. He wrote a world history in 40 books. He's highly venerated. Uh, this is, uh, book has been translated by the Harvard University Press in the year 2000. And I, I'm going to focus on a few statements based upon this eyewitness who dealt with both the ancient Egypt as well as the Ethiopians. Okay. Here's a statement. They also say that the Egyptians are colonists sent out by the Ethiopians. The Egyptians are colonists sent out by the Ethiopians. Of course, that was long before all of the many uh, incursions and invasions into ancient Egypt by various other groups who set themselves up on the throne. And that is what confuses a lot of people. They don't know anything about the chronology, uh, the chronological order of the various uh, Egyptian dynasties. And they get really confused about that. They look at images and they don't know which preceded which. And the fact that none of the uh, Johnny Come Latelys were the progenitors. They were not the originators. They were the usurpers is what they were basically. Let's see. And the larger part of the customs of the Egyptians are they hold Ethiopian. So they're saying a lot of the Egyptian customs are actually Ethiopian in origin. The colonists are still preserving their ancient manners. And any historian who looks at it will concur that this is a fact. If you simply make a comparison of the two as this ancient historian did. Okay. And we're going to get into that into a lot more detail. And before we do, I just want to say one thing. The uneducated uh, 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 detractors would be quick to say, okay, so if that's true, where are the pyramids in Egypt? Well, the fact of the matter is that the Egyptian pyramids and the building of Egyptian pyramids were actually learned by the Egyptians from the Nubians. The Nubian pyramids are more plentiful, even to this day, there are more pyramids in Sudan, which was once of uh, 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 Nubia. Actually, it was never actually called Nubia, but it was actually what we would call Nubia today. Now it is called Sudan. And uh, there are more pyramids there, twice as many, three times as many, I believe, whatever percentage it is. There are more pyra pyramids there than there are in Egypt, and they are older, which means they predate and precede the Egyptian pyramids. And that's where the uh, Egyptians, who were actually their cousins, learned to build pyramids from. Now, what you do have in Ethiopia is technology, just like the ancient uh, pyramids, the, such as the Great Pyramid, which today, modern technology, for those who want to claim some type of kinship to them, they cannot replicate it even to this day, such as the over 11, the 11 churches that are hewn out of solid rock. Modern technology cannot represent that, replicate that today. Oh, no. Searching for gold, came through these remote hills on a long trail and stumbled on this. He was the first white man ever to see it. Lalibela is one of the holiest cities in Ethiopia, and in the 12th century, King Lalibela attempted to build a new Jerusalem. There are 11 different churches each remarkably carved from single boulders of rock and chiseled from the top down. The series of rock cut churches at Lalibela are an extraordinary sight to see. It's about 9 a.m. this morning. We're here at the most famous church here in Lalibela, St. George's Church. 
and you can see it down below. So there's only one entrance, and it's a trench to the bottom. <laughs> Starting from here, just one. So now they are just uh, collecting some holy ash. Oh, okay. uh, to put on their forehead, and this is to, to, to take home and to give for family. Inside of here is Golgotha, um, and the tomb of Lalibela is is back here, but it's only allowed for men to go inside. So sorry, ladies, but it's there's some really cool um, engravings um, into the into the stone. The Ethiopians. According to Diodorus Siculus, that's him. Diodorus Siculus was a Sicilian Greek historian who lived from 90 to 21 BC. He wrote a world history in 40 books, ending it near the time of his death with Caesar Gallic Wars. The Caesar Gallic Wars. Caesar's Gallic Wars. Fully preserved are books 1 through 5 and 11, which cover Egyptian, Mesopotamian, Indian, Scythian, Arabian, and North African history and parts of Greek and Roman history. From his own statements, we learn that he traveled in Egypt around 60 BC. His travels in Egypt probably took him as far south as the first cataract. Diodorus Siculus, The History of, I'm sorry, The Library of History, Books 2.35 through 4.58, translated by C.H. Oldfather of the Harvard University Press in the year 2000. And I'm simply going to read it. So this is Diodorus Siculus speaking on the Ethiopians who dwell beyond Libya and their antiquities. This is found in Book 3, Chapters 1 through 7. Listen carefully. Of the two preceding books, the first embraces the, de the deeds in Egypt of the early kings and the accounts as found in their myths of the gods of the Egyptians. There is also a discussion of the Nile and of the products of the land and also of its animals, which are of every kind, and a description of the topography of Egypt, of the customs prevailing among its inhabitants, and of its courts of law. Remember, this is an eyewitness account. The second book embraces the deeds performed by the Assyrians in Egypt in the early times, connected with which are both the birth and the rise to power of the Semiramis, in the course of which she found Babylon and many other cities and made a campaign against India with great forces. And after this, in an account of the Chaldeans and of their practice of observing the stars, of Arabia and the marvels of that land, of the kingdom of the Scythians, of the Amazons, and finally the Hyperboreans. In this present book, we shall add the matters which are connected with what I have already narrated and shall describe the Ethiopians and the Libyans and the people known as the Atlanteans. Now, the Ethiopians, as historians relate, were the first of all men and the proofs of this statement, they say, are manifest. For that they did not come into their land as immigrants from abroad, but were natives of it and so justly bear the name of autochthones, is they maintain conceded by practically, practically all men 
Furthermore, that those who dwell beneath the noonday sun were in all likelihood the first to be generated by the earth. It is clear to all, since inasmuch as it was the warmth of the sun, which at the generation of the universe dried up the earth when it was still wet and impregnated it with life. It is reasonable to suppose that the region which was nearest the sun was the first to bring forth. And they say that they were the first to be taught to honor the gods and to hold sacrifices and processions and festivals and other rites by which men honor the deity and that in consequences their piety has been published abroad among all men. And it is generally held that the sacrifices prices practice among the Ethiopians are those which are the most as witness to this they call upon the poet who is perhaps the oldest and certainly the most venerated among the Greeks for in the Iliad he represents both Zeus and the rest of the gods with him as absent on a visit to Ethiopia to share in the sacrifices and the banquet which were given annually by the Ethiopians for all the gods together. For Zeus had yesterday to ocean's bounds, set forth to feast with Ethiop's faultless men, and he was followed there by all the gods. And they state that by reason of their piety towards the deity, they manifestly enjoy the favor of the gods inasmuch as they have never experienced the rule of an invader from abroad. For from all time they enjoyed a state of freedom and of peace one with another, and although many and powerful rulers have made war upon them, not one of them has succeeded in his undertaking. Cambyses, for instance, they say who made war upon them with a great force, both lost all his army and was himself exposed to the greatest peril. Semiramis also, Semiramis also, who, through the magnitude of her undertakings and achievements, has become renowned after advancing a short distance into Ethiopia, gave up her campaign against the whole nation. And Heraclius, and Dionysus also they visited all the inhabited earth, failed to subdue the Ethiopians alone who dwell above Egypt, both because of the piety of these men and because of the insurmountable difficulties, difficulties involved in the attempt. They also say that the, that the Egyptians are colonists sent out by the Ethiopians. Osiris having been the leader of the colony. For speaking generally, what is now Egypt, they maintain, was not land but sea. When in the afterwards, beginning. however, as the Nile, during the times of its inundation, carried down the, the mud from Ethiopia, land was gradually built up from the deposit. Also, the statement that all the land of the Egyptians is alluvial silt deposited by the river receives the clearest proof, in their opinion, from what takes place at the outlets of the Nile. For as each year new mud is continually gathered together at the mouths of the river, the sea is observed being thrust back by the deposited silt and the land and the larger part of the customs of the Egyptians are, they hold, European. The colonists still preserving their ancient manners. Oh, excuse me, I think I read that wrong. Let me read it again. And the larger part of the customs of the Egyptians are, they hold, Ethiopian. The colonists still preserving their ancient manners. Okay, I read it wrong. My mistake.